After installing the network editing template for water utilities, you'll find you have three things. A map document, a sample geodatabase that has some data in it that you can work with right away just to, to learn how the tools work, and a uh, editing tools setup that you can install that will get you the toolbar that you see here, as well as some behind-the-scenes editing capability. We'll take a look at both of those things. First we'll do is we'll just uh, window in anywhere in the data, and we'll see that we have several levels of scale suppression. At this level, we're seeing our block outlines and uh, a certain level of labeling along with our water utilities. If we keep drilling down, of course, we'll see additional detail. Now we're looking at our property boundaries, our buildings, and actually seeing our um, services. And also note that at this point, we have a six inch cast iron pipe. And if we zoom in one more time, we'll see that the labeling actually changes to show us the installed in as well. The three most important things about our water pipes. So if we uh, take the bookmark that you'll find in the map document, there's a place where there's some empty uh, space where we might need to enter in some data. Let's give us a good place to show off the tools. So we're going to start by adding a pipe that begins at this system valve you see in the lower corner. And we're going to trace, but what we'll trace is the outline of this, uh, of this block. So we'll use that as our offset for the of this, and then we'll give it an offset distance. Uh, 10, so that it follows along when we need it to. And when we're ready, we can go ahead and tell it that we want to snap to the, to the pipe perpendicular right there. Okay, to snap. So we've added our first feature, and they got the default values initially. We look, we see the diameter is set to 12. We'll go ahead and change that to 8 inch. The most important thing here, though, is that there are a couple of other things happening that are going on behind the scenes. First of all, we're getting our update uh, date, the last date it's updated, and the, uh, the editor. We also now have a place to enter in our install date. And I'm going to say that everything that we're adding right now was um, originally installed in the beginning of February 2009. So that'll be important because if, as we add additional features, we'll see how that value carries over. Go ahead now and quickly add a couple of system valves. And these are going to be added over here, so let's make a window and make it real easy to see what we're doing. And from here, we're going to start at that junction. And we're going to say that we need to add a system valve exactly 12 feet along that pipe. We'll add another one in the other direction. With both of those valves entered, we can take a look at the attribute values and see that the valve that is here on the 10 inch ductile iron pipe gets a diameter of 10 inches. And of course, the other valve that we just entered on the pipe that we just entered gets a diameter of 8 inches. So that's picking up the attributes from the underlying pipe. That um, capability exists for other features as well, and we'll see how we can pull information from other layers as we're entering in features automatically. Other things that we're, we're automatically populating on these system valves include the install date that we entered in to begin with. So that's carrying across to any other features that we enter right now. Uh, it'll pick up the last value for that. We can set that up to, to do last values on other fields as well. So after in, entering in the system valves, the next thing we want to look at is how to connect these meters that you see here uh, to our pipes. So let's go ahead and just select all of the meters. Select those, and these two down here as well. And with all four of those meters selected, if we click the button to automatically add service lateral lines, we'll see that it goes and finds the closest pipe to each of those meters and draws a lateral line to connect it. So this is important for um, other analysis that we might do later, like isolation traces or if we want to add up consumption values. You know, it's important to associate with the correct pipe. We notice that this one connected to the pipe that was already there, that tin stuck to iron pipe. But if instead we really meant it to connect to this pipe down here, what we can do is just click on the meter and click that particular pipe. And then instead of going to the closest pipe, it'll go to the pipe that is selected. So we've entered in our lateral lines for our meters. What do we have left to add? Uh, we need a fire hydrant in this area. So let's go ahead and add one of those. So we will measure a distance from the existing valve. And from that 22 feet, 
We will start there and tell it that we want to measure from that location. We're going to go inward towards that property at a parallel and specify a length one more time. This will be exactly 26 feet in to that property and perpendicular to that line. So we've added our hydrant, and that's just part of the out-of-the-box tools, the ability to add the hydrant using that sort of precision. But uh, part of the template that we downloaded gives us this button to go ahead and add the hydrant lateral. So when we do that, we're going to see some additional things happen at the same time. So we're going to open up a window so we can see real closely what it's doing. So we open the zoom window to view that. We'll click this button and we'll see that not only does it add the hydrant, we'll zoom in a little bit, we'll see that it also gives us the uh, system valve on that hydrant model. So I can also click the Rotate Selected Junctions button, and that will make sure that the hydrant feature is rotated um, so that it's positioned correctly. That Rotate function actually works for all sorts of features, so we can use it for our fittings and our valves. And you may have noticed that the valves had a rotation uh, value calculated when we had those automatically. One last tool we want to look at is um, the tool that allows us to show where we have pipes that cross that don't actually connect. So what I'm going to do is just select a uh, pipe, and we may want that you know, little uh, magnifier window again so we can, can see exactly what's happening. But I'm just going to use a button on the toolbar that says Create Jumps on Selected Lines. And what that will do is, is find that intersecting point and go ahead and create a, a passover so that we can tell that those pipes are not actually connected there. So that gives you an idea of the types of tools that would be available to you, both the behind the scenes, things that work on the attributes, and also the buttons on the toolbar.